This video is sponsored by the Professional Photographers of America, PPA. Join a community of over 33,000 photographers that includes equipment, insurance, business tools, and education specifically for small business owners like you. It was not a happy birthday, not for me. My daughter turned 18. Happy birthday to I'm a photographer. This is the moment I lived for. I wanted to go through all my thousands and thousands of pictures of her entire life and make this amazing slideshow. And you know what I found when I got to her oldest pictures, the most meaningful pictures of her early childhood? Garbage. Just scattered bit rot. I cried. What was it all for? Why had I been doing this for so many years if it was all going to just disappear like that? Yeah, I checked my backups and you know what? They were corrupted too because corruption gets backed up and you don't necessarily notice because I'm not going back to 18 year old pictures every day just when I need them. I'm making this video to save you from the pain that I experienced. You need to put a few minutes into watching this completely free video and it will save you a lot of suffering and a lot of money. Some of you think you're protected, but you're probably not. Hard drives have a limited life. Backups do not last forever. They require constant maintenance, just like everything in life. And if you don't do it, the cost is extraordinary. I've talked to so many real people who've lost photos and were absolutely devastated by it. Maybe you're a professional wedding photographer. A client paid you $6,000 to photograph their wedding and your memory card failed or your camera got stolen on the way out or your house burned down. That literally happened. Well, the client's definitely not gonna pay you, so you're out $6,000, but you're also out the weekend of work that you did, plus the time you spent post-processing, and the client's gonna be real mad because their once-in-a-lifetime moment doesn't have any professional pictures, so they're probably gonna tell all their friends not to use you and write you a one-star review. So a professional wedding photographer might lose $10,000, but an enthusiast taking family photos, those can actually be way more valuable to you personally. I lost so many photos and videos of my daughter's early childhood, but I also lost so many pictures of the first days of Chelsea and I getting to know each other. When we're old and our memory starts to fade and we wanna look back at our life together and all I see is scrambled bits of photos, what would I be willing to pay to have those pictures back? If you're willing to pay some amount to make sure that old you and future generations have access to your photos, then you should be willing to pay some amount today and continually going forward to maintain those photos. I'm Tony Northup, a professional photographer, author, YouTuber, but for decades I was an IT guy, keeping data safe, keeping networks secure, and this still happened to me. I've found the answer and I'm gonna share it with you. I'm gonna show you how we manage over 400 terabytes of data. Yeah, it uses a lot of data to run a YouTube channel like this. And I'm also gonna show you how you can protect your data at pretty low cost. But first I wanna tell you about our sponsor, PPA, the Professional Photographers of America. PPA is a nonprofit organization. They're here to protect you, whether you're a professional or amateur photographer. When you sign up for PPA, you get gear insurance to cover much of the expenses of your gear in case it is damaged or stolen. You also get access to data recovery services. In case a hard drive fails and you lose important files, they will try to recover it for you. You also get access to PPA's Indemnification Trust. What is that, you ask? The Indemnification Trust helps you, a PPA member, with data loss recovery services in case a hard drive fails, but also potentially with legal fees. Yeah, as a professional photographer, I can be sued and I hope I never have to use it, but I sleep a little easier knowing that PPA's Indemnification Trust has my back. For a low monthly price, you receive a variety of unbeatable benefits, including $15,000 worth of equipment insurance, education, and customizable contracts. I'll put a link in the description that you can follow to get a discount on a PPA membership. Whether you've been at this for a while or you're brand new, PPA's in Indemnification Trust can really save the day. Thanks, PPA. But the first lesson, I'm gonna flip this camera around. This is the camera I'm filming with. This is my 16-year-old dog, Sandy. There's something important about this camera. If I flip this open, two memory cards, and I've set it up to write to both of them. Why? Because memory cards fail. This is a bin filled with failed memory cards. SanDisk, Lexar, PNY, 
So any tough memory cards? I personally did the largest study of memory card failure of its kind, pulling over 2000 photographers. Memory card format, SD, XQD, CF Express didn't have anything to do with failure. Memory card brand didn't have anything to do with failure. The only thing that correlated with failure was how many pictures the photographer had taken. Those photographers who'd taken over a million pictures had about a 75% chance of having at least one memory card fail, resulting in lost pictures. If you're not comfortable losing your vacation photos, your wedding photos, your childhood photos, then get a camera with two memory card slots and configure it to write to both. If it hasn't happened to you yet, it will. It's like wearing a seatbelt. Like I'm not gonna get in an accident probably on any given day, but I still wear my seatbelt because you never know. Sometimes people get snarky with me and they say, what about film photographers? Did they use two rolls of film in their camera? No, but film photographers actually lost a whole lot of what would be important pictures because they got damaged in processing or they got sent through x-rays or something else. And you know what film photographers did was they would keep two cameras around their neck with different lenses and they would alternate shooting between those two cameras. That way, if for some reason a roll of film went bad, they at least had the backup body. A lot of wedding photographers still do this. Want to see what's inside a memory card? Pretty simple. No wonder it can fail. Oh, this one has a micro SD card inside of it. I did not expect that. Memory cards definitely inevitably fail, and that's why it's important that you move your pictures as soon as possible to more stable storage, like a laptop, a smartphone, or an external hard drive. I used to use smaller memory cards and then format them before every use, so I always had a clean memory card, and that worked great until one day I copied my pictures from my memory card to my computer, and then a few hours later, my computer's hard drive failed before the automatic backup could run, and then I didn't have any copy of my pictures and I had to reshoot. That's why I now use big 256 gig cards. I keep my old pictures on here for a couple of weeks just to make sure that the files are on my computer and then backed up to a second location too. Because indeed your computer storage is fallible and especially most of us using laptops, you can't have some sort of complex RAID, redundant array of inexpensive disks inside this. You have a single hard drive, a single point of failure. You probably have something that looks like this. An external USB hard drive. This is a good start, but it's not quite enough. What happens if your home gets robbed? God forbid there's a fire or a flood or some other kind of natural disaster, something that affects your entire home, then it's all lost. You might survive, but your pictures won't. There's a not so easy solution for this, and that is to keep your pictures backed up in multiple different locations. Unless you're a big IT nerd like me, you should get automatic cloud backup services, and there are a lot of options available. Companies like Backblaze, Adobe has the creative cloud service, and if you use Lightroom, you can back up your photos that way. On your iPhone, you can use iCloud, Android phones, you can use Google Photos, and they will automatically synchronize from these devices, at least, to the cloud. Cloud services would be prohibitively expensive for me, as I have over a hundred terabytes of photos and videos. That's what you get when you run a YouTube channel with 4K 60 frames per second video and use 50 megapixel cameras at 30 frames per second. There's another major problem with this, and that is bit rot. Bit rot is the spontaneous corruption of data on a hard drive or memory card. You see, every hard drive, magnetic or SSD, is made up of a series of ones and zeros that store all of your pictures encoded like that. Over years, sometimes decades, every now and then, a one will flip to a zero, or vice versa. And whatever file that represented is suddenly corrupted. And that's what happened to me. And that's why all my old pictures got corrupted. There's no alarm that goes off that detects this. There's certainly nothing that automatically fixes it. Even if you scrolled through Lightroom, you wouldn't be looking at the actual corrupted file. You would be looking at a little preview that it had saved. You would only discover the file was corrupted if you actually flipped into the develop module and tried to make a modification. That's why it's really easy to happen even if you're an IT nerd. The next time the backup runs, guess what? Those corrupted files get written to your hard drive because nothing recognizes that they're corrupted. There's nothing that says this one is supposed to be a zero. Generally, this is true even if you have RAID, unless you happen to have a very specialized type of RAID system. 
I use a complex Synology NAS system using BTRFS. Let's take a look at that. This is my Synology network attached storage. You can see I have two expansion bays attached to it. Uh, uninterruptible power supply, a UPS to smooth out the power and keep it going in the event of a power outage. I also have a 10 gigabit network switch that goes to our laptop so that we can move files back and forth very rapidly. This NAS provides for up to 18 hard drives. Currently, I have two of those dedicated to a cache to speed performance. I also have redundancy so that if two drives fail simultaneously, I will not lose my files and a hot spare. If one hard drive fails, it automatically swaps out one of the failed hard drives for the hot spare. That gives me time to order a replacement hard drive. All of the data on this NAS is synchronized off-site across the internet to a friend's house where I have an identical setup that protects me in the event of a fire, theft, or other natural disaster. Another frequent cause of lost images is ransomware, where hackers get into your computer and encrypt all of your files and require you to pay to get them back. To reduce this risk, enable automatic updates on your computer, wireless access point, and router, and whenever possible, keep your files stored completely disconnected from the internet. A few final tips. Get an uninterruptible power supply for every computer, every backup drive, every NAS that you have because bad power is one of the leading causes of failures of many different types. You think that the power in your house might be clean, but there can actually be lots of little waves and those little waves can damage your equipment. An online power supply helps smooth out those waves and particularly helps it in the event of a power outage or a brownout. Trust me, an online UPS will pay for itself. Also use your pictures, make prints, make photo albums, make video slideshows. The more you use the pictures that are important to you, the more likely they are to survive for a long time. After all, even if your files stay intact, they're not doing anybody any good if nobody can find them. I'd like to thank our sponsor, PPA, the Professional Photographers of America, a nonprofit organization that's been around for 150 years. Can you believe that? For a low membership fee, PPA gives professional and enthusiast photographers so many benefits, including a massive amount of training, customizable contracts, that indemnification trust that I told you about earlier, insurance for your gear in case it's lost or damaged, and so many other benefits. In the description, check for a link that will get you a discount on your PPA membership or visit this link here. Thanks for sponsoring us, PPA. In the comments down below, I'd like to hear your horror stories, times you've lost data and what it meant to you. I'd also like to hear your tips for not losing your data. Do you know a good place to stash your pictures so they won't be lost to bit rot or fire or theft? Don't forget to subscribe. We have a ton of camera reviews coming, tutorials, tips like these, and of course, photo news. Bye.